Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Karen Melchior. Karen is a Danish member of the European Parliament. Her parliamentary activities include coordinating the Renew Europe members of the Committee on Legal Affairs. She is also part of the Committee on Women's Rights and Gender Equality, as well as the Committee on the Internal Market and Consumer Protection. As an MEP, she is thoroughly invested in the legislative work related to technology and artificial intelligence regulation. Karen is especially concerned with digital rights and consumer protection. As a result, she was one of the 40 MEPs who co-signed the letter in July this year, expressing their concerns regarding the impact of current discussions on net neutrality and asking for a consultation of any measures implying new forms of access fees on the internet. So Karen, welcome. And you know about our three plus one formats. So you get three questions and one soapbox moment at the end. And let me put the first question on screen. How do you interpret the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact this may have on telcos? Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to the podcast. I think this is a question of old ghosts from the past re reappearing. It was a little bit surprising to me having this discussion reappear when I thought that we'd won the battle for net neutrality nearly 10 years ago. Um, the relationship between users accessing more content and services online than they used to and the impact that this has on telcos is really a sort of the, the burden of success on telcos. They have been wanting us to use more internet bandwidth. They've been wanting us to use our mobile phones, to use our phones. And now that we're doing it, they're like, oh, let's see if we can charge people more. I think having um, extra payment when using specific services is very detrimental for competition because the services might be the ones that are the most used, but they're used by different end users. So if you have somebody starting a business either as a content creator or creating a new startup using a lot of bandwidth, mm -hmm. then having specific taxes or payments from the service providers will actually be a tax on innovation. I think the real um, devil in the detail or the needle in the haystack that we need to deal with is actually the regulation at more horizontally on telcos. We have a telco market that was sort of disrupted 10, 20 years ago with um, the new competition rules at the time, but this has not really been properly implemented in all member states. And I think that the telcos are looking at trying to recoup some of the money that they think that they lost with the growth of online services and the big money that's being earned there. And that, together with everybody hating big tech, uh, they're trying to get big tech to pay more for the services. Um, thank you. I, I like the fact that you frame it as much more broadly than just big tech and telcos, but something that can actually affect innovation uh, more generally. Um, that actually uh, transitions, as you mentioned, the the dislike, I was going to say the hatred, but that seems strong, the dislike of, of big tech at the moment um, and, and the idea of framing it more broadly and looking at collateral damage eventually. Um, what are the inherent dangers, if any, of big tech being requested to pay for the network of telecom operators? I think at the moment there is a tendency of getting big tech to pay for everything that we feel is in decline or underinvested in. So you you have um so the, the answer to the publishing houses not doing well, the answer to the lack of investment in infrastructure will be that big tech should be paying for it. It's a little bit like the magic source of just add technology to any societal problem has been complemented by just get big tech to pay for it, magic source. And I think this is um, this is dangerous because by just saying that big tech should pay more, uh, we are blindsiding ourselves 
to where the real issues are and how we solve the problems more fundamentally. That is one of the issues for one of the dangers of having big tech paying more for the networks of telcos. The other is that it is not the end users using the, um, the services of, it is the end users using the services of the big platforms that are, that are driving the traffic. It's not the big tech companies as such that are driving the traffic themselves. And I think if we want to have um, a more balanced approach to the investment in infrastructure, we need to look at some of the more fundamental problems of investment in infrastructure of telcos. Mm -hmm. And, but also if looking at are there specific companies or sort of cloud service providers, data centers that use more bandwidth than a normal user or an end user, then we could look at should they be paying more for infrastructure or the last meter of fiber than normal companies or normal end users are, are doing. But this is being masked um, by just saying that big tech should be paying more. If we compare it to um, big production companies and in industry using more water or using more uh, electrical power, then I think we could look at models such as those where they either build part of their own infrastructure or they have a special price deal with the, the, with the water and electricity providers. So you could have a data center that um, has a deal such as that. Uh, and this data data center provider could be a big tech company, but just applying extra tax on the big tech is not actually solving the problem, but is just uh, a tax on the people that we already have as scapegoats in Brussels. Um, I like the fact that you say that we're moving from going to big tech or tech in general and telling them to nerd harder to so solve problems now to pay more <laughs> is, is, is the new principle. And, and in both cases, they're probably not sustainable solutions. Uh, it's also, I mean, politicians often say, well, if there is a, a, a problem in society, for, exa for example, criminality, drug trade, um, terrorism, child, children, abuse of children, then we just, oh, we need to solve that through technology, through upload filters, through blocking uh, DSN servers. And that's not actually pr solving the underlying problem. Yeah, it's, but, but you feel better afterwards. <laughs> We've done something. You can say to the voters that we have, we have struck down hard on crime. Um, this brings me to a more uh, specific uh, question maybe, um, which is, do you think it's appropriate to compare the contribution of big tech and telcos in infrastructure as suggested by some? I think that the, the telcos are the companies of infrastructure and the big tech companies are service providers that have then branched out into other things or hardware providers in the example of Apple that have branched into being service provider. And they are their companies are built on having a good digital infrastructure, good access to the internet and access to the end consumers. The, so therefore you can't really compare the cable and fiber uh, telcos, which were the, the infrastructure providers uh, to begin with before they were split up with companies that are based on on providing something completely different. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's not appropriate in my view to compare the, the contribution of big tech and telcos in infrastructure directly. I think it is, um, it's a way for the telcos and the, the telecommunication infrastructure companies to try and sort of shrek away from their, their obligations uh, and the need for investment there is a tendency for the telcos to not want to invest in new technology because they already have invested in the old technology. So they want to use that until the end. 
Um, we see that, for example, in Germany, uh, with a lot of use of copper and not a lot of fiber being laid out. And therefore, I think it's, it's not fair or appropriate to compare the two directly. I think that we, we have in front of us a discussion of the, the infrastructure for telecommunications and data, also from a security and privacy perspective. Uh, with the, the snooping on the, the wires that are going through certain countries, such as in Denmark. And if you have big technology companies investing in their own deep sea cables and sort of having a parallel um, infrastructure, then this could open up for a much wider discussion on how do we actually want to secure and who should own um, telecommunications infrastructure but I don't think that we can compare the sort of monetary contribution into the infrastructure uh, for our communication and our internet of big tech and telcos directly as is being proposed by the CEOs of the telcos back in November. Um, but there is, there is in front of us a very large discussion about how do we secure and make fair our infrastructure. Thank you. That was that was very clear. And, and at the end of the day, it's an apples orange type of discussion uh, in terms of comparisons, um, which which never stopped policymakers before, by the way. But um, um, so we're reaching the end of the podcast. And that's that glorious moment where you as a strong member of the European Parliament can talk to two other strong women in Brussels, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, who is the president of the European Commission, and Roberta Metzola, who is the president of your European Parliament. Um, what message do you want to deliver to the powers that be in Brussels uh, on this file? Well, we, we are lacking one woman in uh, the duo, uh, Magrede Veste, uh, my fellow Dane in, in Brussels. Um, we need to regulate the internet and we need to regulate telcos in a way that prove that we have built up an understanding of how the internet works. We have achieved two big successes with the Digital Services Act and the Digital Markets Act where the competition uh, of the big tech companies with the Digital Markets Act will have to stand its test, mm -hmm. will actually prove that we can do something about the sort of Jupiter-style uh, gravitational pull in competition of networks and digital companies. So therefore, this is not the time to start to give in to pressure from telcos to get big tech to pay more for their infrastructure. We need to apply pressure to member states and competition authorities to look into the telco markets and try and see if the competition is at the right level and that the, inf that the companies are organized in a way that give the best prices and best investment in infrastructure, both for consumers and also for smaller companies, innovative companies that are built on the basis of um, internet and technology and need high bandwidth. It is not, um, we shouldn't try and superficially get more money into the infrastructure just by taxing the companies that we don't like. We need to actually look at the root causes of poor investments in our technology, in our tel uh, telecommunications. And we should do, do that rather than just looking at who can pay more. Also, we really should be aware of the ghosts of the internet past regulation coming back. Uh, this is regarding net neutrality, a battle that has been fought already. And don't um, believe that it is now a completely different question just because it's been dressed up in different clothing. We need to have an internet that is open and free for innovation to flourish in Europe. If we don't have the necessary regulation for small companies, for universities, for innovators, then we'll never get the drive that we need in Europe to 
be a hot house for new ideas and technology and in order to make sure that the next big companies, the next big ideas will flourish in Europe and will not fly away to either the US, India or China. So maintain a free, open and transparent internet, including the telco infrastructure for Europe in order for us to flourish as a digital continent. Thank you. Um, I hope they were taking notes or that they will be taking notes. Um, we, we have heard that there might be a consultation uh, coming out um, in the fall. Um, I'm pretty sure you and your colleagues will follow uh, that uh, closely. And I would say this is probably the start of a discussion. And um, hopefully um, it won't be a discussion that will last too long. <laughs> But should that be the case, um, we will continue and uh, probably do follow-up podcasts or roundtables to uh, discuss it further. Thank you That's so much for your time. Thank you so much for inviting me.